To make the time till midnight go faster, hope this is more your speed. Contessa. I didn't know you were going to be here. <clears throat> and Alexander never mentioned anything to me about your coming. Well, I only accepted because Ross couldn't come with me tonight. He was called over to Clayton about representing some boxer. Do you know what this meeting is about? Well, I gathered it was for Alex to uh, get the troops together, rally them against her brother. Ah. Uh, I understand you spoke to Alan the other night and told him exactly what you felt about that. How did he take it? He wasn't very happy with me. But then what else is new? Well, I hope Alexandra gets here soon, because I'm really not very interested in waiting around for her. I'm trying to raise some money for some unfortunate kids, and I'm much more interested in that than what... Yes. Well... Oh. What are you two doing here? What are you talking about? You invited us. No, I did not. Actually, ladies, I am your host tonight. Oh, I knew it. How dare you, after the stunt you pulled. And as usual, you're trespassing. One of us is Alexandra, and these two women are going to help us decide who walks the plank. Unlock that door, Alan. Oh, I cannot wait to tell Ross about this. You, you can't hold us here against our will, you know. I heard you were back, Alan, but I must say I assumed that we would run into each other in a different fashion. I have to get back to town tonight. I'm chairperson of a charity gala. I'm the hostess. Vanessa, surely that can wait. What better family friends than we four? Blake, marriage to an older man seems to have agreed with you. Marriage to Ross has agreed with me. Vanessa seems to have discovered the fountain of youth. No, thank you. It's not going to work. The evening's young. And last but not least, Alexandra. We must discuss your son's new career. Go to hell. Whether you miss it or not, Vanessa, depends entirely on you. Actually, on all three of you. If you think you can scare us into signing by threatening that we're going to swim with the fishes, you're out of luck out. No one's making any threats, Blake. All I've done is invite you to dinner in hopes that we can come to some agreement. <sighs> we already have, Ellen. See, Blake and Vanessa and I have already agreed that before we turn over one ounce of power to you, it'll be a cold day in hell. The one constant in life, Alexander, is that things change. Sometimes in the blink of an eye, sometimes it takes a little longer. I guess 
This will take all night. You don't care in the slightest. The children we're trying to help are going to suffer because of your greed, do you? Is it greed, Vanessa, to want that which is mine, that which I've earned with my own sweat? Oh, for pity's sake, save us the self-made man nonsense. I realize this charity means a lot to you, Vanessa. Family, friends, right? You do realize this is hardly the way to win me over, don't you, Alan? Are you saying you could be won over, Vanessa? Are you saying you would even contemplate turning any power back over to this manipulative? Oh, isn't that a little like the pot calling the kettle black, Alex? I, I do realize that you are my husband's mother. Blake, really? have you Come forgotten on. the man tried to kill you? I told Blake that wasn't the case. I hope I explained to her satisfaction what really happened. Alexandra, all I've done is get the three ladies that control my future together. Anyone else would have done the same thing in my shoes. I just hope that we can come to a quick agreement so that we can all get on with our productive and very interesting lives. Ah, dinner is ready and none too soon. I'm famished. Fletch, you were there. Vanessa just flat out shut me out of there, you know? She's still mad that I represented Bridget in Peter's custody case. Well, she's forgiven everybody that was involved. Not everybody else had an illegitimate child with her about 20 years ago. Well, then give her some time. She'll get over it. <sighs> some time, yeah, maybe, maybe. All right, well, then in the meantime, let's just, you know, sit here, relax, and enjoy the fights. <laughs> I hope all these guys aren't a bunch of tomato cans. Yeah, just me too. Through. There he goes. Oh, hey, 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 excuse me. You're Bridget's older brother, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I saw you at the country club the night of uh, Vanessa's family dinner. Right. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get a chance to formally introduce myself. I'm Ross Marlar. Ross? Matt Reardon. Nice to meet you. Bridget speaks very highly of you. Uh, you've got quite a reputation. Thank you. She talks uh, well of you, too. She's very fond of her big brother, I think. I'm sorry. Fletcher Reed, this is Matt Reardon. Oh, hiya, Matt. How you doing? Good. Play fans. Irish Tommy McGuigan is my... Uncle. Irish Tommy! We love Irish Tommy. Come on, sit down with us, all right? I'm doing a piece on boxing. I might include your uncle in it. Okay. Right there, right there. It's free. I'm glad I ran into you tonight. It gives me a chance to say thanks for helping my sister get her baby. Yeah, well, a lot of that was Bridget's doing and Vanessa's. Uh, they sort of got together, they compromised, they worked things out. Ladies and gentlemen! All right, all right. So, Matt, tonight... Have you always Next been a fight fan? Well, I've heard some stories about my Uncle Tommy, but no, this is kind of a new interest. Is this yourself? I chopped and grated and minced my fingers to the bone. I regret false pretenses, but in my defense... Oh, here we go. The quality of mercy speech. Alan played Porsche in school. Prep school. All boys. Oh, that duck looks great. If listening to Alan is the price of dinner, I say pass the end dives. <laughs> Where were you, Alex? Uh, it is not strained. It, it droppeth like the gentle rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick it up from there. Wait, there's something I've been waiting five years to tell you. I caused you immeasurable pain. The state says I've paid for my debt, but I assure you, I will never believe that. Vanessa, there was a time not too long ago that... I had very strong feelings for you. Feelings that changed the emotional landscape forever. Emotional landscape? There's a new one, Alan. I might say it's a little overripe. And Alexandra, I forgive you anything and everything. That's what five years in prison will do for you. Gives you time for self-examination, -ex time to face up to your mortality, time to plan the kind of life you want for yourself in the future. I wanted you all here tonight because I wanted you to see the kind of man that I have become and judge for yourself. Oh dear, how truly generous of you. I'm planning a life of quiet and ease. I want to be surrounded by music, art, and beautiful things. Things that I was cut off from when I was in prison. But I will need means to acquire them. Oh, well. Six bucks will get you into almost any museum. I think the three of us can muster that much up. Alexandra, I remember when we were children. We used to spend hours at the uh, Louvre. And as I recall, 
You were quite good at imitating the smile on the Mona Lisa. Mm. You seem to be a little out of practice. You two aren't buying this. <laughs> this duck is really great. Nice and crispy, just the way oh, I like it. For Pete's sake, Blake. He hasn't changed one bit. Alan, this is piracy. People pay thousands of dollars to go on cruises. You're my guest. Will you at least let me make one phone call? To explain my absence <clears throat> at the fundraiser. No need for that, Vanessa. I've already made your excuses for you. I even called Ross. But, Alexander, I wasn't for sure who to call. I'm sorry to hear that Fletcher moved out. What room am I in? Last on the left, Vanessa. Blake, yours is right across the hall. And Alexandra is in her old favorite. Good evening. Well, I think I will turn into midnight snack. Mm -hmm. Well, Alexandra. Oh, don't well, Alexandra, me, Alan. Your stinking, rotten little games aren't going to work anymore. And the trick you tried on Nick failed, and this little drama here is going to fall just as flat. You gotta admit that they're real men, not like these baseball wussies. Yeah, not like hitting 250, getting paid 2.5 million. You talk about being overpaid. Hey, Flat, that's it. That's it. My grass corner just threw in the towel. The smartest thing they could have done is get the crap beat out of him. Hey, you're not one of these kind of people that thinks we ought to outlaw boxing, are you? Or I see guys beating so bad they can't stand. Bleeding so bad out the nose they can't breathe? Uh, Man, that's not the only part of it. Actually, it's, it's a sport of grace and stamina and strategy. That's right. It's one of the nobler arts, you know. It came down from the ancient Romans. That's how they got their noses. Yeah, the same people that brought us the uh, lion and the Christians, huh? Yeah, well, currently I'm interested in some other people altogether. You know, more contemporary, the promoters who control the fight game here in town. Hey, about what you said before. It's uh, only uh, boxers are real men. So what do you mean? That uh, if you're not into boxing, you're not a real man? You're putting words in my mouth, Tom. Yeah, you're starting to sound like you took some law courses there, Matt. No, I just don't know that uh, thumping your chest and swigging whiskey makes you a man. Yeah, I will admit whiskey is a little tough. I prefer a nice mellow Cabernet myself. And in my case, it's a cold beer. Wait, wait, you, you know, <laughs> you're not saying that we guys should be, like, ashamed of these little things here that help to make us masculine, are you? No, I just don't know if we need to be applauding them, that's all. You know what? I never minded changing a dirty diaper. And he has, you know, he has changed dirty diapers because he has to be mother and father yeah, to his son. Save it. And Ross, you know, he's no chest thumper, you know. Yeah, but the whole idea is to strike a balance here. I mean, satisfy the uh, masculinity without having it dominate every other part of your life, the important parts. In my case, that's my marriage. Is that what you're trying to do now, is to equalize that balancing? <laughs> I don't know. But all I know is when I saw Sugar Ray Robinson fight, I started to like Bach. You know, Sugar Ray, now you're talking. Yeah, he, he was the best. And I don't care about all the psycho babble that surrounds it, and I don't apologize for liking it. Yeah, well, I think I've got better things to do with my time. Ooh. Now, why do we suddenly get the impression that you might be a ladies' man? Matt, that's a very noble pursuit, but that's not without its risk, too. Hey, I'm no fool. I'm not looking anymore. Found Miss Wright, have you? It's another fight coming up, isn't there? Yeah. yeah, you know what? That's Lopez. He's our guy. Lopez, Lopez. Sorry, Lopez. sorry, folks, but Shotgun Lopez scratched Whoa. from the night. What are the odds? Two cars, same parking lot, vandalized, same night. I don't know, but my car was parked pretty close to yours. Hmm. Vegas wouldn't lay more than 40 to 1. Oh, driver? Would you take uh, Old Mill Road, please? Murph is really going to love this. 
He's the mechanic, keeps the journal delivery trucks running. He's been after me for a long time to buy a new car. <laughs> Can't wait to see his expression when I send them out to piece together my old one. Well, while Murph is out there, would you have him take a look at my car? Maybe he could jumpstart it. Oh, yeah, sure, I'll ask. Thanks. All right, here goes. In a moment of silence and thanks for Shotgun Lopez, who got me this limousine. That's the reason you're riding in style. You know what? Mm -hmm. I hope Shotgun Lopez is okay. Ah, don't you think? Him being a no-show after he organized us to meet him? Yeah. Do you think the guy that, uh, he's gonna blow the whistle on suddenly... Leaned on him? Uh, that's a possibility. He didn't even leave a message. Maybe he left a message at the office. Well, look at that time. Still early. I should make an appearance at Vanessa's fundraiser. Hey, how about it, Ross? Wanna go with me? Crash yeah. party tonight? <laughs> All right. That would be the fight of the night. Marler versus Chamberlain. Vanessa would just punch my lights out. Really? See, I wouldn't figure her for the unforgiving type. She's like she'd be just the opposite. Yeah, well, don't cross her. Maybe it's only men she's had a relationship with, but... Don't get on that woman's bad side. Jeez. Vanessa, I would like a few words with you, if it's, if it's possible, just to clarify a few things. Of the three women, you're the most logical and the least likely to be ruled by raw emotion. Make it brief. I assure you I have no intention of dragging it out, Vanessa. I've given you my reasons for tonight. I only hope that you think it's possible for someone to wish for a life different than he led before. Do you believe that? Of course you do. I feel you also have wished for the same thing. Renewal, it's called. There's nothing wrong with wanting to renew one's life. To look at the world with fresh eyes. People have essential natures, Howard. Vanessa, don't give me the leopard and spot sermon. I'm a human being. I'd... Nothing human is foreign to me. Nothing concerning money is foreign to you. Not the money that I've worked hard for. When I was in prison, my assets were put in trust. I'm out of prison now. I've served my debt to society. Do you think Alexander deserves the money more than I do? Oh, Alan, I think you, de you deserve exactly what you got. <laughs> Nothing. Well, I thought it might come to this. Midnight confabs and little deals being struck on this. What did he offer you, Vanessa? This is a private conversation, Alexander. And uh -huh. over. Look, I happen to feel that this is a family problem. It's a family quarrel. I want no part of it. Oh, but you are a part of it. You're standing here in a private conversation with Alan. I really don't know what you were thinking of. But... I was thinking that I might as well hear him out, hear what he had to say, and I've done just that. And I'm not in a mood to promise either of you anything. <sighs> I'm sorry. Good night. Sorry, Mr. Marler. It's the alternator. Oh, well, what are we going to do about it? I saw a gas station about a mile back. A mile? It shouldn't take long to walk it. I'll be back soon. I'll go with you. Uh, no need, no need. You guys have a full bar. Help yourselves. Okay. Okay. I think it is time for us to make the best of a bad situation. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have this alarm going off in the back of my head. Does anybody else feel like we're being set up? We don't have to plan our lives tonight. We don't, we don't even have to decide what we're going to do tomorrow. Let's just enjoy the evening. Can't we do that? What have we got to lose? driver's not coming back. Fletcher, you're right. It was a setup. What have I been telling you for the last half hour? So what's the big deal? So we're stranded. We'll walk. Worst thing. Are you saying we're not taking this in perspective? No. Somebody went to a lot of trouble to set this thing up. 
Well, I have one name that immediately springs to mind. Alan. Yeah, and he's just made his grand re-emergence, too. I wouldn't put it past him. I wouldn't put a thing past Alan. Who's Alan, and what would he get out of stranding us out here in the middle of nowhere? His name is Alan Spaulding, and you should be hoping that you running into us was just a case of an accident or bad luck. What do you mean? No, Ross is right, kid. If you have anything that Alan wants, or if you're involved in anything that Alan's mixed up in, guaranteed you're not gonna like what happens next.